Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to answer your questions around submitting photos that is going to prove the genuineness of your relationship. Of all the questions that I have received, I have categorized them under various sections. So we are going to talk about what is the maximum number of photos that you should submit, how to find the right photos that is going to strengthen your application, what is the best format in which those photos needs to be uploaded, what is the best approach of writing context of the photo if you are using the online portal for submitting an application, how to label them and some tips around uploading them in the portal. So let's get started. Before we jump right into the topic, let us first understand what is the primary requirement or the instruction that the IRCC has provided in the form of the document checklist that is IMM5533 and what the instruction says. It states that you need to submit photos of your wedding, customary celebrations, engagement and or outings. Provide a maximum of 20 photos to support your relationship taken at different time and at different places. Plus, you need to write the name and the date of birth of the applicant on the back of each photo and provide a brief description of the context of the photo. Now, these checklist and instruction guides were written by IRCC when the only mode of application was via paper applications. Now that we have an online portal via which we can submit such applications, the instruction in the document checklist and in the guides have not changed on what are we supposed to do if we are using online portal to submit these photos. So let us start with the first question around what is the maximum number of photos that you can submit. Now to be honest, the answer is very clearly stated that you need to provide a maximum of 20 photos, which is what we did when we were submitting our application. So our application was processed successfully, there was no return, there were no additional documents requested. So I believe that 20 photos that is requested is the right number. However, there are a lot of people who have shared their experiences on YouTube and on various forums that they have submitted more than 20 and their application was also processed without any hiccups. Now looking at these experiences, you may be enticed to add more than 20 photos, which is fine. It is not going to be a negative impact on your application. If I were to wear a hat of an immigration officer, I would obviously be more inclined to see the photos and the story behind those photos. But then I would also be interested to look at all the other documents that are provided in the application. It is not just the photos that I'm looking for. I'm looking for proof of cohabitation, proof of contact, proof of sponsors visit, any financial transactions, and a lot more that I have already covered in my previous videos. You can check it in cards about the other reason why i say 20 photos is a good number is because you also need to provide social media posts and you can leverage these as an option to show more photos of your relationship let's say for example the day you got married or you were engaged or you were on a trip with your friends you or your friends or your family member had made some posts on some social media platforms you can make use of those photos in the post under this section of Proof of relationship is recognized by your friends and family, which asks for social media information. So in a sense, you already have an avenue wherein you can show more photos besides the 20 photos that is being asked. This brings us to the next and most commonly asked question around what is the right photo that I should select and what are the photos that I should ignore. So let me put it this way. You need to start from the start of your relationship. And the starting point of your relationship is not necessarily the time when you got engaged. It is the time when you had simply known each other. So for example, you were studying together in a school or a college and you have some pictures in which there are some friends who, along with you in the picture and some of your friends are showing up again at some later point in time in another picture. So this can be a good place to start. Second, try to avoid selfie as far as possible. But if you're taking a selfie and you have an iconic building or a landmark structure in the backdrop, for example, you have a Grand Canyon or you have an Eiffel Tower showing up, then that pictures can still be used. These pictures can in fact become very strong evidence in proving the genuineness of your relationship and this can substantiate any of the claims of travel that you have disclosed in any of the forms that you as a sponsor and as a principal applicant have tried to meet each other during the course of the relationship. The other criteria that you guys can consider to find the perfect picture is if you can find someone who is ready to write a testimonial for you guys and that particular person is showing up in any of the photographs, you would want to use that photo. I'm going to explain this in detail in the later part of the video when we are going to talk about how to write a good context of the photo. The next factor to keep in mind while selecting the photos is social recognition. You need to have a lot of different people showing up in different photos at different timelines. But it does not mean that you need to pick random people in the photo. To do this, you might want to reach out to your friends and family and let them know that you are doing this application and you are wanting their help to find out the right photo that they can use. You may never know, you might unearth some amazing photo of you guys. The last tip that I have to find the right photo and this is going to resonate more closely with my fellow Indians. 
Trust me, you will be tempted to include more photos from your wedding rituals and wedding ceremonies. I know those photos are going to be amazing and that is going to add a lot of weightage to your application. But instead of using these photos in which the place and the timeline and the attire in which you are and probably the people in the photos are not changing is not really adding a lot of value. If you follow closely to the instruction, it clearly states you need to have photos from different timelines and different places. So instead, just have two to three photos from your wedding, probably two to three photos from your engagement and some pictures from travel and other life events that you had. So for example, in our case, when we got a car, we had a photo from that event. We have a photo from the event when we entered our house after the wedding rituals and some pictures from our honeymoon. This brings us to the next set of questions and this is all about the format in which these photos needs to be uploaded in the portal. So instead of giving you multiple options of what is the right format to upload it in the portal, I would rather want to give you what I think is the best approach to go ahead. So in my personal opinion, the best approach would be copy a photo in a word file, write the name and the date of birth of the applicant, date and the place where the photo was clicked and the story below the photo. So when you are done that, number that photo like 1 of 20 or 2 of 20, 3 of 20 and then save the file as a PDF. After repeating this process for every photo, you will end up with 20 PDF files and there is a reason why I say this is the best approach to go ahead. As you would know, every file that can be uploaded in the online portal, there is a maximum limit to the size of the file. It cannot be more than 4 MB. Now, when you're going to upload multiple photos in one word file and put it in the PDF, that might go beyond 4 MB. So if you're going to anyways have multiple PDF files, why not have 20 so that when you're submitting the final application, you can visually review and tell whether all the files that you wanted to upload in the portal have been uploaded or not. This will save you a lot of your time which can get wasted if you are just going to figure out what is the best way of compressing these photos. In the next section, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of how this can be done. There are a lot of people out there who have recommended to make use of collage of photos instead of using one photo. That is something that you can do. But if you're doing this, it becomes really difficult for you to write the story of each of that photo of the collage in the file. So in my personal opinion, there is no need for it. But if you would want to go ahead and do it, then it's fine. And if you're not going to use the online portal to submit your application, but are going to use the paper format, then you might want to simply print this on a standard photo paper in the sizes of four by six inches and write the details of the photo that I'm going to talk in the next section on the back of the photo using a permanent inked pen. This brings us to the next set of questions that we have, and it is all around how to write a good context of the photo as I'm showing you right now. So in this case, if I'm taking a fictitious character of Sansa, who is the principal applicant and Joffrey, who is the sponsor, so in this case, I would just simply paste this photo like this and number the photo. Now, why we are numbering this photo, I'm going to talk later in this video. Then you would write the principal applicant's name, that is Sansa Stark in this case, date of birth, which is 1st of June 1995. Then you would write the name and the date when the photo was taken. So in this case, the photo was taken at Cornwall, United Kingdom, and the date was 1st of December 2020. Then you're going to write a story that is the context of the photo. Now, this is going to be very crucial on how you're writing it. So let me walk you through an example. In this case, the story written is like V, that is Joffrey, who's the sponsor, and I, this is written from the perspective of a principal applicant. So Joffrey and I are seen walking down the aisle towards the altar on the day of our marriage. This picture was clicked by my brother-in-law, Tommen, who has also been kind enough to write a relationship testimonial for us that I have provided with this application as part of IMM 5533 Part B Question 7E. So this is a picture which is connecting a dot between two documents that are provided in the application. So there is a testimonial that is written by Tommen, who is the principal applicant's brother-in-law, and the principal applicant is trying to help the immigration officer to connect the dots and substantiate the claim of the genuineness of the relationship. So if we go further in this picture, along with my friends and family, my brother-in-law can be seen on Joffrey's right. She also shows up in other photos, 6 of 20 and 17 of 20 submitted in this application. So this is why I was telling you numbering a photo can really be of great help. Let us take one more example. So this is the second picture and I have numbered it as 2 of 20, name of the principal applicant and date of birth, place and the date the picture was taken. So the place is Glasgow, Scotland, taken on 1st of December 2015. There's a story, Joffrey, that is the sponsor, and his parents visited my city for the first time along with his family. Our families had known each other for many years. So my sister, second from the right, and I went for a picnic with Joffrey. 
My sister also shows up on the day of our wedding as seen in picture 5 of 20. I have disclosed this visit of Joffrey in IMM 5532 part C question 4 submitted along with this application. So here there was a travel that this sponsor did to meet the principal applicant and this travel was disclosed in IMM 5532 which is a relationship questionnaire. So now I hope you have a much clear understanding of what is the best approach of writing a context to the photo that you are providing. And if you are submitting a paper application, you need to write all the information that I just showed on the back of the photo. If you feel that your handwriting is not too good or you will not be able to fit in all that information in the back of the photo, you might want to simply get it printed from the nearby print shop and paste that information even that is going to be why. There is no mandate on who should write the content of this photo. It can be the sponsor or can be the principal applicant. So key thing to note here is when you are submitting a relationship photo, it is not you who should be convinced that this is a genuine photo. It is the immigration officer who needs to be convinced of the genuineness of the relationship. So you need to help him connect the dots of whatever is the information that you have provided in the entire application. So if there is a travel that you have disclosed in one form, try to corroborate that evidence with a photo. And if there is another photo that you are providing, then try to collaborate with the testimonial that someone can write who is in that photo. Before we move to the next section, I have an important point to make. Do not write anything on the photograph. Try to write below the photo if you are using a word file or write behind the photo if you are using a paper application. Writing anything on the photograph is not just simply going to erase the important information on the photo, but also it is going to be difficult for you to find the right font size and the font color that is going to show up on all the photos in consistent manner. So this is how you can make the best use of this section in the proof of relationship. So once we are done with that, the only thing that remains is labeling the photo and uploading it in the portal. So I am now logged into the online portal and accessing the application that was already created. If you are new to the concept of online portal and do not have an idea of how to get registered, you can check some of my earlier videos by which you can have an understanding of how this can be done. So in here, the application is submitted under the family class for Sansa Stark, who is the principal applicant you will have the region called Upload Required Documentation. So the, in the fictitious example that I have taken, the name of the principal applicant is Sansa Stark. So the naming of the file would be Stark-Sansa-Relationship-Photos-1. And likewise, if you are going to submit 20 photos, you are going to have Stark-Sansa-Relationship-Photos-1, 2, 3, 4, and till the point of 20. In my opinion, this is the most cleanest and logical way of labeling your file. There is no point of writing the content or the story of the photo in the name of the file. For example, irrespective if you are submitting your wedding rituals or your engagement ceremony or your trips, there is no point of writing that in the label of the photo. So do not write wedding ritual 1, wedding ritual 2, Europe trip 1, the day I got to see my friends. Instead of that, just simply write principal applicant name hyphen relationship photos 1, 2, 3, 4, 20. When you are uploading these photos in the online portal, there is no set sequence that you need to follow. However, if we were to give a logical approach to anything that we are doing, you might simply want to arrange these photos in a chronological sequence and number these photos from 1 to 20 and upload the photos in this sequence. So I believe whatever I have covered until now is going to address most of the questions that you might have while you are preparing the application and you are finding the right photos. But there are a lot of people who have reached out to us on our Instagram handle and have asked us what are they supposed to do when they have a secret marriage or they have done a court marriage and the relationship is not widely known. And this is pretty common in a lot of other countries when the families are not in agreement. So this becomes really difficult for you to prove the genuineness of the relationship. So the key thing to remember is IRCC is really flexible if they are convinced that the relationship is genuine. So if you can provide a letter of explanation along with whatever photos that you can gather that is going to prove that your marriage was actually recognized by different individuals. It, it may not necessarily be your own family member. So it can be your friends or the family who were your witness when you got a court marriage or a secret marriage. And if you have any travel history together, you can use those photos and you might also want to make use of relationship testimonials and the people who are writing those testimonials can also be in one of the photos that you are going to submit. I can imagine this can be emotional draining and difficult but if you can focus on what you have and what you can get that is going to help you go through this application all right so this brings us to the end of this video i hope that you found this video helpful if you did please do not forget to leave a thumbs up and put down in your comment what you liked there are a lot of people who are reaching out to us on our instagram telling us that the videos are great but they are not taking the time to leave a feedback in the comment section please do comment on the video if you found this video helpful and if the content of the channel interests you please do not forget to subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching guys meet you in the next video till then take care bye bye